everybody, it's Valerie, Valerie Wallace Fine Arts. I'm here in Orono, Maine in my basement studio for my one o'clock drawing class that I'm offering every day. Um, it is Tuesday, May 12th, 2020, and today we're going to do um, the Mount Katahdin, which is up in Millinocket, Maine, and um, I feel like I'm screaming, and <laughs> I'm excited. And um, this painting is modified a little bit, but it's an original, beautiful painting by Frederick, Frederick, <laughs> Frederick Edwin Church, okay? And you know what? We are going to get right into it, okay? What I want us to start with is going to be the horizon line, okay? That's out here where the lake starts to meet the land, okay? And for this picture, top to bottom, I'd say it's about in the middle. If anything, go a little up because the sky is a little not so interesting and there's a lot that happens in the bottom you don't want to run out of room okay so I'm gonna find I'm gonna start with this bright yellow because it kind of represents this crazy moment when the when the leaves the trees look like they're on fire in the sunset which probably will kind of disappear but we'll draw it anyway top to bottom I'm gonna find the middle and I'm gonna go up a, a smidge okay and I'm just gonna draw myself a line that goes all the way across it doesn't have to be super heavy. There's a little bit more of it kind of right here in the middle. Okay? So let's just start with that. It's tilty? Mm, a little bit. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so I will kind of cheat this side up a little bit and cheat this side down a little bit and that'll kind of... Most of this is obviously going to get covered by the trees. So I don't need to go heavy when I'm coloring here because pastels sometimes they don't want to go on top of each other. But if you don't do it at all, there's a chance that you're going to have kind of sparse trees and then it will like look weird because there'll be nothing behind it. So do draw what we're drawing over here, even though it's not quite as heavy. I'm going to do one down here. So I went um, top to bottom. I find the middle and I'm just going to go up a little bit and I'm going to see if I can get this line straight. Of course, this is a little bit different with the black. If you're doing pencil or if you're doing charcoal, um, you know, it's going to have a little hits. You're missing the colors here, okay? So that's just the way that it is. But it's, you can still draw it. This will be fun. I know what everybody wants. And they're freaking out, but it's going to be easy. I'll show you. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to do these sort of foothills that are kind of orange. All right, so get an orange. And what we're looking for, if you happen to have crayons, get the peachiest orange you can find because... These colors are very, very, very light. And you think that bright orange is going to work, but I'm going to have everything that I do, I'm going to put white over to try to let lighten it. Okay, it's tricky without paint. Um, right in the middle here, let's see, let's see. This is about the middle. That's about how high it is off of the horizon line. So I'm going to go up to the middle and I'm going to say, well, I want to go maybe about here. As I go to the right side, for the most part, it kind of just goes down. Can you see this? Very light. Okay, I'm going to do it a little bit darker, but go lightly if you can. Always get in the habit of starting out things lighter. All right, so I'm going to go here, and then from here it starts to creep up, okay? But not a lot, but I'm going to go up a little bit like this. Again, I'm going to color over here, but I'm going to do it real lightly. All right. I will give you a chance to get caught up, but I'm trying not to waste a lot of time at the beginning of the picture, which I know is a little tricky for those of you that might want to watch live. Um, but I, when I, I save these on YouTube and I don't want it to be something that's like, an, you know, Boring. three minutes of me waiting for everybody to get ready on live. It's kind of complicated. I don't know really which way to go. All right, so I'm drawing this. I'll do it like that. And then while we're getting people to ca get caught up, what I'm going to do is take the white I have and I want to blend that on top of this orange. And if you have pastels, this will work fine. And I'm sure you have a white, unless you've used it up. If you are doing colored pencils, you know, usually you have a white, you don't know what it's for, but that would be, this would be a time you could do that. Um... If you've got crayons, you can probably find a super light um, orange anyway. Or if you have a really big set of pastels, you could probably find yourself something um, that's light. When I do this, this, um, this 
piece is a painting, which I did last spring, uh, last June with a um, bachelorette party. Oh, yeah. um, it, it comes out beautifully, but the, uh, it takes me a long time to really fine tune the colors. They have to be just right, and then no matter what you do, it's flawless. But getting the colors right is really tricky. So in this one, when we're doing it, it's a little, you are figuring that out on your own. You know, all I, the biggest suggestion I give you is keep it really light. So what I want to remember is that everything we do in the sky, I mean, the, yeah, up here, we have to do in the water, we have to reflect in some way. It doesn't have to be exact, but in this case, because the water's so still, it's sort of mirror imagey. Um, so what I'm going to do, sometimes what I have people do is, I, I don't want to, well, I guess I could do it like this, is if you turn your paper like this, sometimes that makes it really easy to kind of say, I'll go right along like that. And that makes it really easy for me to draw the mirror image like that. That's a cool tip. Yeah. Because I'm a little dyslexic and, and I find that tricky to like tr switch those things over in my mind. So you may want to do this while you're working and that'll help you to get it pretty symmetrical. Um, if it doesn't, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Because it's reflection. It's not the actual thing. And when I'm working with reflection, I can leave little spots, spaces, or I can fill it in. Um, if it if it's orange and then another color, what happens is that's how because of the waves because the wave will catch the light on one side and it'll catch the light on the other side and that will make it um, have different colors. But as long as we're putting some orange here, and I use my white a little bit, we can always add to the water later on. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you're just getting started right now, all I've done was I found a spot, a line, just a little bit above the middle point of the paper, and that's my horizon line. And then the, um, in this one it's yellow, in this one we're just doing the black. I'm finding about how high, this I want to go a lot lower here, okay? And, on, and it's going to go this way, it's going to get lower towards the, the right side of the picture, and it's going to go a little bit higher on the, the side. And, um, with this, I don't want to look have it look like it's got an, um, a line on the top. So what I'm trying to do is I want to blend that line into sort of a, a shape of color, a shape of shadow. All right, and the this is a pretty good example of when you're looking at kind of hills and mountains in the distance, the darkest ones are going to be the, the closest ones. And so in this case, they would be also the, the lowest. You can see how the, this, this orangey color is a little more intense, a little darker than this purple, and then this one purple is even lighter. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so we have that. So again, the same thing. I'm, I'm sort of imitating, reflecting a little bit of whatever that shape is in the water. We're going to start off all right. We're going to do the light things, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to put in the darker things. Okay? Okay. And do that. You did. I did, though. Oh, now I have a light on. Okay. All right. So next thing you want to do is get your purple. You did. You're right. I know. I don't know why it does it. I don't understand. Maybe I did that in my interview. and They're overriding they it. Yes, probably spam calls. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is this little foothill here, and I'm going to use my purple. I've got kind of a reddish purple. Again, this purple, like if you can even see it here, you can see how much darker this is than what's up here. And if you make it purple, it's going to be pretty and it'll be fine and it doesn't matter anyway. But it is, if you're trying to go, you want to have this beautiful sunset effect, you want to get it as light as you can do it. So again, I'm probably going to use... Actually, you know what else I have is, I have this, oh, well, that's white. Isn't it? Yeah, no, I guess it's, it looks like white, but it's actually, I put my white here. It's actually a very, very gotta light. Gotta bring it closer. It's maybe. a very, very light, light pink yes. that I have. Um, I might use that. All right. So there's a, a rise right here. I think that's about the middle, right? 
okay? So find from side to side, find the middle, go up here, and not way up, right? But just a little bit. Like the height, the distance, the distance of this purple bit right here at the highest point is, you know, still s smaller than what this is. So, you know, I wouldn't want to go any higher than maybe right around here, okay? Um, I'm going to have to draw it a little darker so you can see it, but you draw lightly if you can, all right? And it's headed over, you know, we have this great big bunch of trees, so it's only going to go to maybe about right here. So it's going to come down in here. And um, then this lowest point is way over on the sides, way over here. So I'm going to go down like that to there. These things don't matter that much. Okay. All right, so I'm going to color this in pretty lightly, and then I'm going to use the, the white, the pale pink. If you have a light purple, then use that. If you want to do this and make it with a blue sky and green trees, Kind of just take the same idea. This is kind of an autumn picture, I think, too. Um, and just change the colors up. But just work on having them get lighter as they get farther away. Okay. One of the things about this picture is that when it comes to sort of color theory is that yellow and purple are opposites. Yellow is a primary color and purple is a secondary color because it's a mixture of the other two primaries which are red and blue. So by the time you take yellow and then you mix purple with it, which is basically mixing all, pri all the primaries together, you get brown. So purple and yellow make brown. If you mix them in just the right amount, that's what you'll get. If you mix them a little off, you'll make your yellow a little goldish. If you just put a little purple, and if you put um, just a little bit of yellow in your your purple, it'll just kind of take the edge off the brightness of it. Okay, it just depends on how much you do with both things, and like also what kind of what kind of paint you have and all that sort of thing. So anyway, that's why this pic there's something about this picture is that you're starting to get all these sort of. I mean, all, granted, this is not yellow, but the orange is the you know. The yellow side of red. So blending the purple and the yellow, purple and yellow together here is part of what dulls up the purple because this color purple versus this color purple are a lot different. Okay? And that's a lot. I mean, there could be some aging to the picture, but I think it's more just the way that it was done. Okay? So remember that once you've done it up here, you want to suggest it in some way down, down below. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. You don't want to go too heavy because we have the canoeist and we don't want to interfere with the fun of that. So, but if I think a little bit about this being where, where the purple and the orange meet, I know I'm a little bit extra here, so I might work my way down from there and work my way down from there. So opposite. So again, you can turn your paper on the side if you want. And what I'm probably going to do is take these colors, put them on here like that, and then I'm going to just go over it with a, a light, a white or something like that and kind of kind of blend them together too. Because the more, I don't want to think of my water as different slices. I want to see it as one solid thing, but it's reflecting the colors. Okay, so we'll just do, do it like that for now. Um, I got to do it down here. So I found the, the middle, right around here. I got a little up a little bit, went down to the side here, and then just kind of worked my way down, and then went up a little bit, okay? Again, I don't really want to outline, so I'm gonna try to work that line, just kind of shade down into this a little bit. Such a pretty, beautiful painting. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to take this eraser too and I'm going to use that. And it doesn't totally erase the charcoal, but it kind of smooths it out, takes a little bit off. So 
far so good? Am I lopsided? Yep. Okay, good. All right. Sticking with the purple, and now we're going to do the peak, okay? Now, it's the point here is, you know, from here to here, that's how high we're going. And the, and the thing about Katahdin is that it, from a lot of angles, it's, it's just a slice right off the top. But it does have this little tiny piece that just sticks up in the middle. Little. It's little. Okay? If you happen to draw it too big, make a bump, and it's too big, you just bring up either side of it up so that it's, it doesn't stick out so much. So, um, let's see. And the peak here, right here, if I draw a line down, is a little bit to the right of center. So if I find the middle of my page, right, and I'm going to go over a little bit, it's going to be up here, yeah, around there, right, yeah, and up, you know, and what happens is, is it's kind of, I wish I could, didn't, I wish I could do it lighter, but anyway, it's kind of like a little straight line like this. Um, this point is a little bit lower than here, but, and it's over this way, so it starts to go down a little bit, over here. And in the middle is just a little, 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 little piece that goes up. If you don't have it, it won't matter anyway, but kind of like that. And then for the most part, she just goes down like this, okay? The other one, it comes over to here, which is a little beyond the height here. And then it kind of comes down like this, okay? Um, if you don't get it just right or you shift it to one side or another, it doesn't matter, okay? You just probably the thing you want is you just want it to sit up here. Get it up into the, the sky a little bit. Don't have it just above this because it's tall. In, in Maine, it's our highest peak, right? Yeah. Um, what's the one down behind the mountain? Then I gotta get that nice and light. I'm gonna take that white one. Lighten this, this right up. I want it lighter than the one that's in front of it. Daphne and I did some paintings of Mount Katahdin from this place up on the highway where you, there's a special pull off. The scenic. The scenic overlook. Yes. And on 95. And we went twice, mm -hmm. but we made about, in the end of it all, about oh. six paintings? Oh. Five or six paintings. Yeah. I mean. We made two the first time and we worked on each other's paintings and we sold those. And, and then we made ones. two more. You, yeah, you have one. Yeah, wow, well, well, yeah, you painted. I technically you did. You made another one, and technically and we I did one a lot before. Of well, I had a small one too. And oh yeah, one. and I had done one just from. Actually, photo. we have one here right now. It's for sale. <laughs> it's funny. It looks like a museum, but yeah, it's got the price on it. It's on. It's upstairs. If you're interested in ValerieWallaceFineArts.com, you can see it on my ticket page. I want to buy a Take painting. Take it off our it's hands. It's in a, um, it's big, you know, yeah. it's like this big. And it is, uh, um, late summer. So it's like gr greens and blues and stuff. It's nice. It's yeah. nice. I like it. I like having it in my house. If no one buys it, then I'll keep it. Yeah. Or I'll give it to somebody someday. How's that? Is that working? I'm, I'm into it. Okay. So... I've got to do the same thing down here, you know, with the water. Again, I'm thinking a little, you know, 
doesn't have to be exact. First time we went to paint, all right, let's see. So the, with the mountain again, you know, it's it's as high as I went to this peak up again. It's up here quite a bit. And if I start with that kind of straight line and make that little divot in the middle, not divot, no, because that's going down. I keep wanting to say call it something, but I don't think I should call it that. Um, go up a little bit, and it starts to come down a little, and then it goes down now. Okay. Yeah, the first time we went to 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 paint, it was so buggy. It was so buggy. We got bugs in our paint. Oh my god, it was horrible. And windy. And so windy that it kept blowing. You'd think it would be windy enough to have kept the bugs away. kept the bugs away. Not the case. No. And it was so windy it blowed there was blow down the easels. Yeah, it was it, it was, was unpleasant. Difficult. It wasn't yeah, yeah. We yeah. made a couple of nice paintings though. We had to finish my home. Yes. It's quite a bit of work. But because they were very big. Yeah. Um and then the second time we went was really nice, right? Yeah. But we didn't get back. We thought we were going to do it all summer long. We didn't get back until just before Daphne went back to college. Well, I, I had no jobs at the time, and then I had four. I know, you have, right? Yeah. Maybe we'll do it this year. Yeah, we got time. Maybe. I don't think it looked that great right now, could, though. Hey, maybe, you know what? Maybe if somebody else wanted to draw Katahdin, we could, we could go to Katahdin and meet. And... Spread out. We could. And I could help you. Maybe. Maybe I can't. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe somebody else can help us. Mm. One of the things you have to get used to if you go paint out in the world. People being nosy. Um, let's say it in a nice way. Mm. <laughs> Lots of interested cool. people. Yes. Once in a while, some unsolicited advice. Yeah. Yeah, when we used to we did do the Bangor paint. Yeah, we used to yeah. do a Bangor paints thing where you one day you'd go out and paint around in Bangor, and then they'd have a little auction. Yeah. And there's a lot of painters in Bangor that have <laughs> advice. Yeah. But you know, you know, it was fun. Well, it was then fun. we'd get a sunburn though. Oh, it was sunny. It was like in the summertime. And your paints would dry up. Your paints dry up really fast when you work outside. That's. That's why it's nice to have oil paints. If you ever have oil paints, that's the that's the way you want to use them is um, outdoors. Mm, summer. What am I doing here? Okay. Okay. I we need to do a little bit of sky and a little. Oh, we have to get going. We have yeah, to move we're this, right, this is a slow one. Yeah. All right. We gotta get moving. All right. So I'm gonna take for I'm gonna put. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to use this, this gold, and I'm going to put a little bit of it up and, oh, that's dirty. Okay, a little bit up on the top, this ochre color, and then I'm going to take my white, and I'm going to go over that. Too much over here because I'm gonna have to draw those black trees on there, and I don't want. Okay, but that'll give us kind of that sky color. Another thing, actually, another color that looks good with it is this very, very light kind of shell pink. That's kind of a nice. It's sort of similar to what's going on up here. It's kind of a crazy color. Again, it could very easily be aging of the pigments and they change the colors. Oop, stupid. Okay, so I want to do some of that down here too. So I might take this shell pink and kind of blend that into my water. I gotta remember where the water is. That goes to this yellow line. 
but that will keep things kind of bright. Uh, maybe a little bit of gold down here, reflecting the sky, and then a little more white. I don't have to do the very bottom of my picture, because that's where the black shoreline's going to go. Okay. It looks kind of crazy right now, but when you start putting all the details on there, it all comes together. But you kind of have to set, you can't, as much as you might want to draw all the black things first, you can't draw those things first and then color everything around there and have it come out right. So you have to do it first. You have to put off the, um, what is it? The fun part? The joy of doing the, like, what you're painting, what you're doing the picture all about. You know, you think it's about the, the canoeist, but it's like, Set things up first. Okay, so down here, I'm gonna just do something quick. Um, it's a little different, so. All right. Yeah, just kind of. Oh, slow. Yeah. You wouldn't think it would be slow, but it does. This one takes a while. You want more painting it. It's a lot of things. Okay. Oops, that's not gonna work. Up here, I will just put a little color at the top and work that around a little bit. All right, so we're going to go to, um, all right, let's get doing the, the shoreline. I have a super dark brown, which is called sepia, and if you can do, if you have something like that, a dark, cool brown, like, a, you know, like this kind this kind, Michelle? Yeah, kind of. Put um, it yeah. Lower? No, it's okay. All right, lower. Um, well, anyway, it, um, this would be a good choice to kind of do the black, um, especially back here. But if you don't have that, then it's fine. And if you also, if you don't have that and you have kind of um, a, uh, a green like this, kind of a brownish green, that would be good too. Okay, I think, I think I'm going to do that with this. So what happens is right along, right below this yellow line, there's a little skinny, skinny little bit of line that is kind of the shore. And then um, it has, I don't know if you can see, but it has little bits. It's very, very, very tiny. Okay, because it's so far away. If you make it, make them an inch tall, then you're, you're going to lose the feeling that your um, lake is way far apart. The other thing, the reason why I'm using this greenish color is because it is getting quite a bit of light, and it's also the same thing as we did with the mountains, that these things are going to be a lot darker because they're closer to us. This could be a little bit lighter. And so then what happens over here is, it, is um, they get bigger as they, as they go to the side of the paper. So it's little tiny bits of trees, and then they get a little bit taller just because they are curling around the lake a little bit. And make sure it's dark at the base. If you get a little bit sparse at the top, that's fine, but you need it to be dense where it hits the water, okay? If you really want, and then the other thing is, is you have a little bit of reflection, all right? So whatever you, you have, you could skip a little space and you're just putting a little bit of this green. You're just real light-handed. It doesn't have to be a lot, it's just a sense of it, okay? You might want to take your brown or your reddish brown, maybe that's what, maybe like this one, and go right along the base, and that's kind of like the rocks. You know, like usually a lot of times there's a beach or rocks or something at the base of the water, okay? So that's how that is. There's just little, little tiny, tiny little um, the wiggles of your pastel, and that will do that. So here it's right here, and then as I get over here, I'm going to start to sketch it up a little bit. And then as I go here, I'm going to get it a little bit bigger. And that will make it look like it kind of comes down. Anyway, I can bring that off that horizon line and down a little bit. Okay? And again, don't forget to have some sort of um, reflection in the water. It's, you don't have to do anything particularly fancy. It's just repeating the color in the water, okay? It's just, it, it changes things. It makes everything seem like it is more real than, than otherwise. All right. Um, okay, let's do, let's do these trees. And then 
Okay, so you're going to take, I'm going to start with this green because I want a little bit of green from behind you, but after I get going, I'm going to take a darker color. I'm going to take the dark brown, I think. Okay? This from the shore, from this shoreline to the bottom of your paper is about in the middle. So from here to here, that's about here. Maybe up a little bit. Hold on, I did make a little green line. That's okay. I'm going to go up a little bit. I'm going to draw a line that comes over. Don't go, don't go too far because you have a lot to color in, but don't only go about an inch because it will seem awkward. It will be sort of not enough. Okay? These are seem like enormous trees to me, but I'm sure he knew what he was doing. So what happens, I'm not going to go maybe quite so tall. I'm going to start like this, and I'm going to make a line that comes down like this. I'm imagining maybe that there's a bank here, so the tree isn't quite as, doesn't go all the way down to here. The next tree I'm going to do is spaced over a little bit, is it maybe a little shorter? And then depending on how much room here, you're going to have one or two other smaller ones, okay? It's going to get smaller as it goes towards the water. The hardest part about doing these trees, remember that they're triangle shaped. So say I start with this one right here. Um, what I want to be thinking is that it is kind of like this. Okay? But, and what I'm going to do is kind of color in and out and fill up that triangle. And I want my edges to be rough. So if they're not rough, the place where I need it the most is going to be right in the right at the top. This all of this lower part, if you haven't noticed, is all black. Well, I don't want to. You don't want to see spaces through there because the trees, you know, they fill in. There's bushes. There's all kinds of stuff. So you want to fill in at the bottom. If you look at your picture later and you're like, ah, something's funny about the trees, that's probably what it is. Why do I know that? Why am I going to go out on a limb and guess that? Because I have seen it. I mean, I've been doing this. Well, I've been teaching for 15 years. I have seen it, especially, well, I've seen it a lot. That's, we'll just go with that. A lot. A lot. Even when I say it and, even, and, they, and people know it and they just can't quite grasp it. So just remember that part. Same thing. If I kind of sketch in a little bit of a tall, skinny triangle, then I'm going to color up and down. This time I'm going to, you know, and I'm doing it at an up and down angle. So if I go in and out like that, and try to make it jig jaggedily along the edges, I will have myself a tree. And when I come to this other tree, I'm just going to color right over that guy. Okay? And that's going to fill it in all nice and thick. Okay? If you need to, a lot of times people get blunt right at the top. Like if it just is like this. Or maybe like it's you stop it and it's right like this. All you do is go to the middle and add a little piece on the middle at the top. A little like a long piece that sticks up there. And then if you want to add a couple of a little V of greenery, you're good. So same thing here, a little little triangle. Like that. Add a little more in the middle. Okay? I know this is green, so I want this to go darker. So I did it like this. I'm going to take my darker color, and I'm really going to amp it. I'm going to get very, very dark in here. Because this is part of what this is all about, is this silhouette thing. But a little bit of green along the edges is kind of how that light is being picked up from the sunset. And maybe the water or whatever. Okay? And I also want to go all the way to the edge of my paper here. At least part, you know, the lower part. You want to bring that right out to the edge. Okay? But it's kind of like these. You get that filled all right in. And then I need to have a little reflection. So I'm going to take my dark color and it's kind of dash, 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 side to side. I don't need to go all the way to the bottom because I'm going to have that reflection. All the way over here. It's a little bit less here. Okay? Good? Is that working? not yawning today. That's because we got some tape. Some disease? No. Oh, because you had some... Oh, that's what it is. Okay, yeah. from the bottom to the shoreline, it's about halfway and up. I'm going to draw a line that comes over. This is going to be a little bit of a kind of a slim triangle like that. That's my land. I'm going to start with a nice tall line. Maybe this one will just have three. 
and a smaller one, and then maybe a little short guy right here. Okay? I'm imagining that this is a triangle. And obviously they'll overlap each other. You see them? Okay? That's not hard. Right? Uh, it's not. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to go jig jag like that, right up that side, right to a little bit at the top, in and out like that. I'm going, pointing them up a little bit. In and out, and I want these to overlap. That's how I'm going to fill in all down low where the where the brush is thick. It will look funny if they're sparse. Although sometimes that happens. Sometimes um, you get real tall pines or firs, and the lower branches fall off, and um, and they are kind of like spaced out, and you have like pine needles all over the ground. Which really nice. So, and then I want a little bit of dark. Side to side, okay, don't go up and down. Side to side with your reflections. Okay? All right. Let's get this bottom in here and let's get this, how much time are we doing? 38. Okay, so we're not bad. So if you don't have time to fill, so I'm definitely gonna use the black on this part. If you don't have time to do all this right now, do that, we'll do it as quickly as you can and then come back to it after you do the, um, the canoeist. But I'm gonna, do it real quick right like this. So I will color it in, and I'll want this to be really dense and dark. Dense and dark, dark and dense. Okay, and what the little trick is to make it, he, he doesn't, I don't know whether, I mean his picture he doesn't do this, I think it's a little bit different anyway. The picture's a, you should look up the picture because this is you know, better than this, but I simplify it a little bit. Um, is that if you make a few little lines like this, sure. like that, it, can, it will look like the grass against the shoreline. Um, you know, maybe a little, just even, just even coloring it up and down a little bit like this. Uh, if you put, if you're really fancy, you can kind of do something with a little bit of dotting and that'll look a little more like or flowers or something like that. But, you know, add a little more grass in there so it doesn't look too random. But see how that works? Isn't that neat? Yep. Sometimes those are the hard things to do, though, or they're just, like, how do I know how to be random? But you can practice. All right, that's kind of thing you do when you're, you know, waiting for somebody to answer your call or something is doodle little bushes and you'll get a little shorthand for it because everybody does it differently okay same thing here and then we're going to make our little canoeist and we'll be good to go and there's all sorts of um videos for you to watch on uh free drawing classes with valerie wallace fine arts on youtube or you can watch them on facebook and um, there's more than 50, so there should be something. If you like landscapes, there's some other, there's a, well, there's a, a nice sailboat, and there's also a two or three, well, there's two barns, and there's a cabin, so you ha can do a little um, with some kind of dwelling on your thing, on your picture. And a lighthouse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and a lighthouse. And then there's portraits and animals lots of animals and tomorrow we're going to do a bulldog i'll show you the picture okay let's do our canoeist okay um i want a little black i think it doesn't have to be this tiny okay if you make it a little bit bigger just don't you know i mean if it's this big it just means he's right there okay the smaller it is the, the further away it looks, okay? Um, so don't worry about being super tiny. Okay, this is how we're gonna do it. Don't think too much about it. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a line. This one is tilted a little down the lake. We're just gonna make it side to side. Okay, that'll just be a little smidge easier, all right? You have a line. Find a place you think it makes sense to you. If you're going to make it pretty big, you want to make it closer to the bottom. If you have a feeling that, you know, if you're somebody that works tiny, 
put it way out, put it up here. And it will just be like this little tiny thing far, far away. So you decide, if you don't know, it doesn't matter either. Okay, so you're gonna put a line like this. I'm gonna make mine about this big. Okay? I'll do one, then I'll do it again down here. And then you can go about your merry way. Okay. Because it's a canoe, it curves a little bit here, and it curves a little bit here. And it's pretty um, shallow, like from the water to the gunnels is pretty low, okay? So if you need to, make yourself a little dot right here. And it's always easy to add on, you can't really take away. You can't really take away, if you make something too big, you just have to make everything bigger. Okay, so if you can keep it a little low spot like this and then come from the bow down like this and the stern like that and you can color this little sliver in and the canoe is pretty small so if you can keep it little great if it winds up being kind of tall just pretend it's a different kind of boat you know um one of the things that happens is it does it has a little reflection but what it has is right here in the bow there's a piece that kind of turns in that direction and then that goes back in with a little bit of reflection and that's like how it it goes up like this but the the reflection is flat out so we can go sort of like that okay if you do a little just a little blur I kind of sit it in the water okay now the guy or the girl is a per, um, is a per the person is basically like a little tiny triangle with a little nub on the top for the head. Just a little tiny bit, just a little tiny head, okay? Um, and what you might wanna think about is that when you make that triangle is that the head would be, in this case, on the left of that point. Because it's on the, like my head is on the front of my body and not on the back. If you put it more towards the back, it's just gonna be lean, it's gonna look like you're really sitting up or leaning a little bit but if you bring it a little bit forward which usually happens when you're can canoeing is that you hunch a little bit okay so and we're not this guy you don't really see the paddle okay um and in this case the the body not with the head is about the same height as the um the, the boat okay so if you go if i go way up to here then it's going to be, I'm going to have to make my boat bigger. So I'm going to keep it nice and low. Better small, you can always add on. So I'm going to make kind of a triangle. Can you see that? Hardly. I'll show you guys afterwards anyway. Or, or you can, you know what you can do is, if you want to watch it, this last bit is just zoom in. And you can zoom in, you, if, if you don't know how to make it full screen, um, if it's on your phone or something, you should be able to just spread it bigger like that as long as you've clicked on it first, and then you can see close up. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is put that head, oh, it's got green on it, no wonder it looks green. There we go. Okay, oh, it's not green there, okay. Um, so I'm gonna add on, I'm gonna add a little bit there. That guy's got a big head now. Okay, does that look like a person in a boat? Um, if, if, if I were paddling, I'd have a little extra something here. Well, I, you might be up here. Um, and then you'd have that paddle that would go out. So if you really want to, I think it would be in this direction, kind of like here. Okay. All right. So I'll do it again down here. Um, I'll do it a little bigger bigger than probably looks right. So I start with that line in the middle, right? Okay, I'm gonna curl that up here just a little bit and curl it up just a little bit here. I wanna find a place in the middle that's very low because the boat's low so that I can come down from these points a little bit. Not points, but the bow and the stern, I can come down from that a little. All right, color that in. And like I said, I, I go, I continue the, the water line part of the boat just a little bit like this, and then kind of smudge the bottom of it. Even if you're using a pencil, you can do this. OK? 
okay? And that'll sort of set the boat in the water, all right? You, if you don't do anything like reflection with the boat at all, it won't look like it's in the water. And there's no reason that you have to have it have a perfectly crisp, because not only is the sun um, in making this a silhouette, so that would be the shadow and the reflection of the water. So you definitely need to have a little smudgy down here. Okay, so then what I do near the back, okay, I'm going to make a little triangle. That's kind of a big triangle, but a little triangle, and then I'm just going to add a little kind of box. This guy's really hunching over. If I make just a teen, if I make a little box, and I make a little teensy weensy little line. It'll look like you've got a hat on. Right? Good. Got it? Maybe a maybe um a couple of little wiggles in the air for a couple of birds. Oh, I do like that. Anything else? No, nope, looks pretty Ooh. good. Phew! Did that it. was a difficult one. It's not hard, it just took a little time. It took, it took a little time, it's a lot of coloring, um, but but I, I love it. I think it's awesome, and I would love to see your picture if you want to show it to me. Um, I would love that. If you don't want to, that's okay. If you um, would like to leave a donation, you can click on the link that's just below the video, and that will take you right to the spot where you can leave a donation for as little as a dollar, which is just wonderful. Um, and, uh, if, um, something else, something else, that's something else. Valerie9 on oh, Venmo. Oh, Venmo, Venmo, it's on there too. Tomorrow we are going to do, uh, for, for my gal Halsey, I know this, maybe this isn't exactly what she had in mind, but she said bulldog, so we're going to do a bulldog, and something else. I don't know. But anyway, I'll show you, give you a close-up of... Of the painting and so you can you can pause on that and you can finish up hey hey max hey jen hey marcy and your boys or one of your boys anyway gina happy birthday gina hey bethany hey mom hey Clar hey clarissa i mean veronica my daughter oh i know we'll see you s soon christina hey mag oh rhonda oh oh my gosh there's so many people Hey, Matias. Hey, Sue. Hey, S Sandy. Sandy Wadley. All right. Thank you. See you tomorrow at one o'clock for the bulldog. There you go.